What's up, family? On January 15th, 65-year-old grandmother Betty Smith traveled to the Linderman Grocery Store in Austin County, Texas, to purchase ice cream and honey buns for her special needs son and was jumped by three white employees. Three white employees that the Austin County Sheriff's Department refused to arrest and that the Austin County Prosecutor's Office failed to indict. But don't worry. The good brother Quanell X and Dr. Candace Matthews is on the job. They will be in Belleville, Texas on February 28th, that's Tuesday, to demand that the U.S. Department of Justice and the FBI take over the case since the folks in Austin County appear to be incompetent. Incompetent in regards to justice. Fan. I got the press release right here. Yeah, man, it's going down. It's going down. It is absolutely heartbreaking. It's totally disrespectful for all the work that black folks have put in on this country that we still can't get a fast shot. Just can't get a fast shot. So, what Cornell and Candace is recommending is that from this point on, there are no more all-white juries. I can dig it. That's right. Give me a jury of my peers, man. Give me a jury of my peers. I got a few white friends, but most of the friends that I have, they are black. I need to see some black folks. That's right. I need a fast shake. I need to feel like, man, you know my background. You got some type of empathy. You look at me as a person, as a human being, the way white folks on those juries and who are judging and who are prosecuting look at the defendants in their cases and, and in, in many cases, the, the victims. I need you to feel something for me. I don't need you to look at me when I walk in and I'm like, oh, he's the enemy based on color. Because you see, all of us have implicit bias. Every last one of us have some degree of implicit bias. And we take that with us to the job. We take that everywhere we go. The problem in the judicial system and when it comes to law enforcement is that when you take that implicit bias with you on the job, people's lives are affected. People can be killed. People get their freedoms taken away. I'm not with that, man. I'm not with that at all. Shouts out to Cornell and Candace for doing the work. I know that they, got, they, uh, they are under immense pressure. Oftentimes from people who look just like them, the people that they're fighting for the most. Ungrateful mother... Boy, I'm telling you, man, ungrateful will sit back and complain about what they're doing. They'll complain about what people like Cornell doing and people like Candace is doing while they do nothing but complain. It's OK to complain, but after you complain, do something about it. And that's what they're doing. So I'm with it. I'm especially with it, anybody who would stand up to this wicked system. Because you're not going to have any problems if you're not fighting for black people. You're only going to have problems in this country if you're standing up for black folks. You know, Think about it, fam. The black folks that, that are just chuck and jive and all that kind of stuff, they don't really have any issues. They don't really have issues because they play the game. 
But man, if you black man, they finna man, they finna check you out, man. They finna look everywhere. They trying to find something on you. And the trip part about it is that before you can even get to them other folks, you got to get through your own people. Boy, them black gatekeepers, man, they got to go. So the backstory on this case is that Betty Smith walked into the grocery store to buy the ice cream and honey buns for her special needs son, who she left in the car while she went in right quick. As she's about to check out, she notices a $50 bill on the floor. She picks it up and says, oh, my lucky day. Cashier overhears her and says, no, you can't take that. That might be my friends who just left. It might belong to my friend who just left. And she's like, no, no, no. So the woman tried to take it from her. And then as she resisted, the two other, a man and a woman, two other workers, they attacked her. Betty said that the one in pink was particularly aggressive. And she was fighting for her life. She said the woman put her in a chokehold and everything. Her, I believe it was her, her, her granddaughter or her daughter uh, came up there. She called her daughter and, and she came, the granddaughter or the daughter, she called him. And then they came up there and then the police arrested them. This is why it's important to have people like Candace and Quanell on the front lines because if not for them, this case is swept under the rug. They returned no indictment. There was no arrest made for this woman. This woman was assaulted. No arrest made, no indictments. And that's another thing. Before you can ever even get to an indictment in Texas and in many other places in America, you got to get through the Klan jury. That's right, I said it. Klan jury. It's mostly made up of white folks who don't like black people. That's right, I said it. It is very difficult to find some people who are objective in those, in those Klan juries. Very difficult. Because they go in there with the same mentality that many of these racist police officers have. The judicial system is stacked against us. A whole bunch of uncivilized mutts. It is almost impossible to get a fair shake. Man, if you are innocent and, you know, get a slap on the wrist, you feel like that's a win. Damn near, it's like, it's almost feel like a win. Well, at least they didn't put me in jail for 30 years. And they only gave me 18. I know I ain't do the crime, but damn, I had to sign it because, man, they got the jury. Boy, they come in there, man, that, that, that if you got a public defendant, oh, you should damn sure finna get sold up the river. But let's say you go in there, they gonna go in there and try to say, hey man, like, look, even when you got a paid lawyer, a lot of times a paid lawyer, he's not interested in your innocence. He don't care. To them, a lot of them run meals. They run meals. So they treat people like case numbers. And they just trying to get in and get out, get in, get out, work the deals as fast as they can. Okay, look here, man, you know, or we could do this if we go in here. And then, you know, they, they, if you say you're not guilty, then, you know, we could take it to trial. And, you know, you, you know, they might give you 15. 15 is the max. But I'm pretty sure I can go in there and get you five. They, they do this stuff all day, every day, fam. And you wonder why people plead guilty for crimes they didn't commit. Because they have people who work within the system. Professionals, prosecutors, lawyers who will get in your ear and tell you, look, this is what it looked like. And then you start thinking about all of these resources these people have and how you ain't got as many. Even if you got some money, man, they're going to run through your pockets. And you still may not be able to match their professionals that they're going to come up, they're going to call to that witness stand. They got an expert for everything. Okay, expert this, expert this, expert this. You, it's hard to match them. So a lot of times people just plead guilty when they're totally innocent. 
it's a cold game. It's a cold game. But, man, I'm giving these people their flowers, man. All you activists out there, man. I'm going to give y'all y'all flowers, man, because it's not easy being in this country fighting for justice, especially if you're fighting for the justice of a black person. It's a cold, cold game. Miss Betty, keep your head up. You're going to be all right. I think they're going to move the needle on this. One thing I do know, it will not be swept under the rug. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?